Time and time again, we've spoken about how impressive smartphone cameras are becoming nowadays. If there's one area that is seeing constant development in the smartphone market, it's always in the optics section. Look at the kind of phones we are getting now. Companies are pouring in multiple hours of R&D and so many resources into creating a smartphone camera that's better than the rest and best of the best. But what's the ultimate goal here? What's the objective? How good does a smartphone camera really need to be? We've seen cameras change from one to four, sometimes even more now. We have phones that have 108 megapixel lenses that can capture incredible detail, can zoom into a shot like a pro DSLR telephoto lens. Artificial intelligence has also been used in cameras and AI-based engines are being used to improve color accuracy, depth perception, so much more, right? Employing AI in the camera pipeline has numerous advantages like improved processing, better looking shots. AI also has helped getting more stable shots, improved night photography. But at the end of the day, we're still not satisfied and we want more and more from the cameras on our phones. The end goal, I think, is to improve camera performance so much that it mimics the human eye. I'm going to give you some very interesting stats out here. Our eye is the ultimate guide for a smartphone camera or any camera for that matter. The highest resolution of a smartphone camera, well, right now, 108 megapixel, right? And the resolution of the human eye, at least 576 megapixels. That's the calculation that is being done nowadays. So there's still a fair bit to go out here. Now, this is where computer vision image signal processor or CVISPs now come in. The idea here is to move image processing innovation from within the image signal processor just like your eyes, which will ultimately help the overall processing power of the camera itself. With CVISP, you can expect much faster image processing as it will happen in real time in the viewfinder. And you can see it before you even click the shot. What you see is exactly what you get, rather than having to wait for the image to finish processing and then seeing the end result. CVISP reduces processing time and allows you to click more pictures of your favorite moment as you will no longer have to worry about what the post-processed image will look like. In simple words, computer vision ISP means what you see in the camera viewfinder is exactly like I said, what you get. Having a computer vision ISP means that the plain old ISP processor gets a big boost to overall performance as well as enabling a number of new use cases. With CVISP, Things like multi-object tracking comes to the fore as your phone will be able to track two, three, maybe more objects all in real time. CVISP also helps with portrait shots as it helps the phone in determining even more accurately what's the background, what's the foreground, what subject is to be kept in focus. Since many of these use cases can be processed within the ISP hardware, this can also be executed at very low power. This is important, especially when using battery heavy features like capturing 4K video, shooting at 60 frames per second. Now, in today's episode, we're going to go and find out from Qualcomm how they're executing a computer vision ISP on their processor. We're going to find out how enabling these superior camera techniques on the Snapdragon mobile platform is actually panning out. So let's go and talk to Lakshmi Rayapudi, who is the VP Engineering Qualcomm India Private Limited. Lakshmi, thank you so much for joining us. My first question is all about Snapdragon. You know, it's been providing a number of innovative camera features year after year. Now we're hearing of a brand new innovation, a game changer called Computer Vision ISP. What does that do exactly? Hey Rajiv, the CV part of the CV ISP is all about the camera understanding what it sees. When the camera understands the scene, then it can map the photographer's intent uh, to the same in a much better way. Once the camera gains that awareness, the CV functions will enable any use case that the photographer is conceiving by finding key objects in the scene, tracking points of interest, computing depth information, and understanding motion of the camera and its objects, all of it in real time. Just like the way our eyes view and process the data, feeding information to the brain today, Conceptually, there is no difference, it's exact same. Okay, and what use cases are enabled by CVISP? Yeah, Rajiv, uh, the CVISP enables any use case requiring depth or motion information from the scene. And to quote some examples off the top of my head, depth processing from stereo cams for bokeh effects, object or face recognition, motion processing for noise reduction in MFNR, motion compensation filtering techniques for MCTF, image stabilization features like EIS or even SHDR, MFHDR for that matter. 
The other ones are uh, object tracking to track people or points of interest, points in your room when you are wearing VR goggles, enabling six stop movement through virtual spaces, de-warping, warping or translating image frames to correct the lens effects. All these are closely tied to CV processing. So obviously my next question then is about AI. Does the use of CV ISP now diminish the use case of AI on the devices? Will we now rely less on AI? Good question, Rajiv. Answer is yes and no. The CV part of the CV ISP can be viewed as a hardware accelerator of what could also be done in AI. But the idea here is to offload these key camera functions to CV ISP so that the AI engine can be freed up to perform other innovative tasks our customers and partners wish to implement on the device. And we see this every day as we work very closely with our ISVs and OEMs and ODMs. So what we do typically is that for a given use case, we work together with them on the design to architect the software splitting the workloads between these two hardware blocks for optimal power and performance gains for any given use case. We do this every day. And how are AI and CVIS being used together in conjugation with each other? Yeah, Rajiv, to quote some examples, the CVISP may be calculating depth and understanding elements in the scene while the AI engine is segmenting them or rendering objects into the virtual space. Or the CVISP may very well be providing cues on motion in the scene while the AI engine is performing advanced noise reduction for video or performing low light correction for a snapshot. So really the CV ISP commonly works in conjunction with the AI engine in all of our Snapdragon devices. Thank you, Lakshmi. Thank you very much for joining us on the show today. Thanks, Rajiv, for the opportunity to introduce some of our CV ISP features and how we are enabling millions of users to capture what their naked eye sees. Great talking to you. Thank you. Let's now talk to Anuj Sharma, the country director for POCO India. Hi Anuj, thank you so much for joining us on the show and many congratulations on the launch of your brand new POCO X3 Pro. What can users look forward to in this new smartphone? Well, thank you Rajiv and thank you for having us. Now, we are very excited about the launch of the POCO X3 Pro. In fact, the POCO X3 Pro, thanks to the Qualcomm Snapdragon 860, becomes the most powerful phone ever launched under 20K in India. But not just that, you also get great overall experience in terms of gaming, multitasking, and of course you get a really, really good camera. And let's talk about the camera experience, so important now for consumers. What is the main difference in the camera on the X3 Pro? So the POCO X3 Pro uses Computer Vision ISP or CV ISP feature that comes on the Qualcomm Snapdragon 860. And this gives you an overall enhanced user experience when it comes to the camera performance. Now with the advanced CV ISP, you can capture lifelike images straight on your phone. Now the CV ISP and the advanced AI is automatically able to detect the object that you are trying to shoot. It could be people, pets, buildings, landscape, or flowers, etc. And it automatically changes the image parameters to give you the best possible shot every single time. Now, furthermore, during low light conditions, the camera is automatically able to adjust the brightness and contrast to give you that best shot. And this does not come at the expense of loss of colors or even added noise. Okay, and what about video? Will users be able to see a difference in video experience, videography with the CV ISP, this new technology? Absolutely. When it comes to video, here again, you can see some amazing video effects thanks to the CV ISP on the Snapdragon 860. Now, Video Clones lets you create a twin of yourself when you're shooting on the XT Pro. Now, Dual Video lets you fire up cameras on both sides, the rear camera and the selfie camera, so that you're able to share the story from both angles at the same time, thanks to the advanced processing that you see here. Now, the overall motion processing is also smoothened thanks to the CV ISP features that you see on the XT Pro. Thank you so much, Anuj. Great to have you on the show with me today.